struck a nerve, didn't I? Hey guys, this is my video talking about your guys' comments for my Season 15, Episode 18 review, and ooh, I haven't gotten that much of a negative reaction in a while out of you guys. It's interesting to see. It's been a while. This is reminding me of like Season 12, Season 13 kind of drama. First off, something I do want to make a note of. I didn't make a comment about this, but Sam character arc in this episode was actually pretty well done. It was one of the parts that I was holding on to. It was Dean's whole ridiculousness of the episode that was really not dragging me in, as well as Cass's speech where he talks about Dean being the most selfless person on the planet. Destiel, whatever or not, that is complete bullshit. Dean has been just a complete asshole cartoon for the last, the last six seasons of the show. He's been a very very ridiculous arc of himself and i it can i can see that the showrunners are making him the main thing whereas sam is essentially a sidekick it's no longer dean and sam it's dean with sam i guess you would say that now but yeah that's where i'm gonna descend on that you can have your own opinion of it i thought more so it was like hey you taught me how to be human you taught me how to appreciate the world yeah and i love you bro but yeah, that's it's them coming as close to not addressing it while not addressing it while addressing it at the same time. It, it, it's that carrot, that fucking carrot still there just because. Y'all did 158 comments at the time of me reading this. Holy shit. It's a lot. Thank you. Um, other part is, though, just because we're just a little bit low on the, th the thumbs up, I'm not asking for a lot, but could you guys just bump it up a little bit so then it can go to 69 and I can just go, nice. All right, let's start. I was laughing so much when Castiel... I was laughing so much when Castiel said to Dean that he was the most selfless, loving person he'd ever met. This is the same Dean that put the entire universe in jeopardy to save his brother at the cost of everyone else's lives. The same Dean who tortured people when he went to hell because he wanted his own torture to pain and pain to stop. The same Dean who, ju who just an episode before pulled a gun on his own brother, which Cass was there and saw. So Jack could die and destroy Chuck and Amara. He has constantly lied to his brother and kept many secrets from him over the years. No, Dean is not a selfless and loving. He is an extremely angry and damaged human who puts himself and his brother above the safety of all others that's what i like about his character though he's a flawed and interesting character i just don't like contrived dialogue to try and evoke emotion like they're doing now this scene was not earned it was forced 100 percent flawed characters are far more interesting than these bastions of hope and i i don't know the the, the original five seasons i will give that a pass in terms of that's what he that's the whole the arc is but to try and make this garbage that he is Ooh, the great like it was just so forced yeah i i didn't enjoy it i know some of y'all did but i did not to me castiel's i love you wasn't destiel but his love of dean as a brother being able to express it something that he could never have done before yeah that's kind of how i saw it as it must be difficult to review an episode when you keep falling asleep while watching. I was distracted by the need to do dishes. The dialogue was insepid, the events were uninspired, and Castiel's monologue was so cheesily written and acted. The whole episode dissolved in nothing. Misha's trying, but he just, again, trying to shove a massive amount of obvious build-up character and whatnot. Like, Castiel's done nothing for the last two seasons, and then they just it all into this end point it's un it's 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 ill-prepared planning i disagree i actually liked it i'm aware that they copied infinity war but a lot of other movies are copying marvel such as transformers dcu blah 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 i enjoyed the dialogue between dean and Cass. i would give it a five out of seven you were too harsh with this episode the season wasn't actually bad it's the best season in years mainly because of the fan service everyone coming back that's not good writing though sir that's pandering that's not good writing and this is not the best season in years the best season oddly enough is season 12 season 11 before that obviously but my god this is just it's the fact that they let this happen like it's not good dude i'm not harsh i'm being critical but thank you for your comment I think Cass's death was supposed to evoke a sense of peace for the audience, but the episode itself was pretty bland for the most part, yeah. So it lacked the necessary juxtaposition for the scene to stand out. And you're right about the fight scenes. I'm tired of seeing them get flung around, knocked out, sitting in a corner, looking shocked or running away. Like, repeat, 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 repeat. 
Wow, the cast speech is long, but I still liked it. We're, we've been waiting almost two years for his deal for the empty to play out. It's nice to see him get to proactively make the choice and clearly feeling happy, content as he is taken away. I get where that's coming from, too. Um, and yeah, it was something that they've been dangling for the longest time. And I think that they never had an idea of what to do with it. But it just felt so useless, like death was dying and but then she's I, I do admit knocking on the door someone's gonna make a comment about that later on that, that was kind of an interesting point but i i again force like it literally was crammed in with like hey they're gonna remind you about the story element and instead of using it like proactively we're just going to it in because we need to also they had to show each have they've had to shows writ each season written for years even before infinity war quit comparing the two they both had good ideas you're grabbing for straws here dude and this comment goes along and whatnot and they talk about he makes a comment that he thinks that this show this ending has been written for a while it has not i can confirm this i have worked with several people i am working with two people the uh, first ad and a second ad of that show right now and they confirm to me when I asked them that the show literally never had any forward planning. They were literally writing the show each season to end, but also possibly continue because every season was only picked up for a second season or a following season in the latter half, like the last quarter of them filming the current season. That's a writing nightmare to do that for 15 or 10 years straight because apparently that's been happening since season five. So to see, no, no, it's never been planned. I don't know why people insist that Destiel or whatever was always a thing. Not because there was anything wrong with that, but there isn't. But it's not supposed to be in any of the previous 11 seasons. Cass has been on the show. First of all, angels are asexual, junkless sissies. Are you talking about dogma there? Because that's a good reference to dogma. Then in season six, Cass watched Pizza Man, Babysitter Porn, and got a boner. That really happened. Yeah, the Pizza Man. I love that part. In latter seasons, it was implied that him and Meg banged. Cass and Dean spent the last two seasons barely speaking. Dean always said Cass was his family brother. They definitely had a family bro love, but nothing sexual. Again, I'm not going to go there, but I'm just saying... They definitely did this for the, the the odd fans. Like they didn't answer it, but they got close enough to give a non-answer. Of course, we have again the villain doesn't kill the main characters right away because which causes his downfall trope. They better have a good excuse for this. Uh, yep, it was Infinity War all over again. Chuck became Thanos, sapped his fingers, and erased everyone from an Earth, only uh, Dan, uh, saving only Sam, Dean, and Jack. How original! Andrew Dabb and Robert Singer and Castiel Dean scene felt like it was a writer's forcing a confession scene, but so desperately didn't want to. That's a good way. That's another good way to put it. Poor Castiel. Got, glad he's gonna rest from the terrible writing first. <laughs> Jeez. Did anyone uh, notice there's something about Jack? There's something different about him, him getting close to a plan and it dying. Rachel Miners, the empty, also mentions it and when she says, it's you. She notices something different about Jack. Maybe he will be the new god. Yeah, that that plan did like kind of fade away from him, but I don't know. We'll, I guess we'll find out in the next episode. This episode reminded me that hunting has become too casual. Most people have forgotten that hunting used to be dangerous. During, during earlier seasons, most hunters had nothing else left or were in the game for revenge. But nowadays, hunting is comparable to a candlelight dinner. Yeah. There was a reason Sam and Dean's planned on retiring and why Dean did exactly that after Sam died. Edit, those scrambled eggs looked really bad for supposedly tasting delicious gordon ramsay would not approve that's a good one but yeah no the casualness of it again the, the, the show lost its stakes its stakes are gone which is what i talked about at the very beginning when jack blows up but then comes back right back again who the next person's going to talk about holy shit that jack blowing up in the empty is the funniest thing i've seen in years the way he, it was set up was straight up from the roadrunner i half expected the empty to hold up a sign saying uh-oh no, that's good. That's good, too. I remember watching the first episode when it aired 15 years ago. I loathed this episode. It couldn't be more lackluster if it tried. The lack of imagination and awful acting is just heart-wrenching. If it wasn't already ending already, I'd have sent it to Switzerland to be euthanized. At least Trump lost the election today. Appalling. <laughs> Ooh, that's... Woof. 
Funny thing, I searched for the Supernatural Season 15 Episode 18 rant because I was pissed off again and found this. Love your videos, man. Folks, I have a question for you. How many of you are still watching the show just because the five, the first five seasons were great? It would really concern me. I've actually been watching this show because it was something that my dad and I did. It was something that we started back 15 years ago. I would just watch the how I would watch the episode with him every Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, when it all switched around. It was only in the latter years, particularly season 12, that I stopped watching it with him because he couldn't watch it anymore. So I'm watching it more so as an obligation because like, I gotta watch it to the end. I thought everything with Sam in this episode was pretty strong, or as strong as it could have been given how underdeveloped characters like AU Charlie and AU Bobby are, and given that Ellen's actress wasn't available, I guess. It seemed like him pushing through the trauma he was experiencing as opposed to the last season where he kind of let himself be consumed by it after the massacre of the Apocalypse Hunters. There wasn't some, there was some interesting growth in there in terms of the leadership arc the show set up for him and dropped at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I remember that. The whole idea of him being a leader. I just wish they had explored that more over the entire season instead of jamming into the last second. This, the rest of this episode is a mess. Holy crap, the show went really went to shit. I was getting a headache because I kept uh, rolling my eyes. Lads, I just noticed and that I didn't even care about Cass's final death. He was my favorite character when the show was still great, but somehow managed to kill every emotion off of me. Okay, not every emotion. I'm still angry at the moment. Honestly, yeah, I did not feel anything when Cass died. I was like, oh, this is it. This is the end. I somehow feel he's going to come back. I somehow feel it. I don't think this is his end. I'm actually going to bet on it. I, I would like to be wrong, but I bet you this isn't his end. Lame, boring, uneventful, unoriginal, and good luck to Sam for keeping that old Plymouth running on diesel fuel he topped it off with. Don't need Zobaldin to get to sleep on a Thursday nights now. I just forced myself to get through the lackluster episode. Yeah, no, honestly, it's... I, I struggle to stay awake during these episodes, guys. Not only because I'm watching them after like a 15, 16 hour day, but it's, it's really boring to watch sometimes. Except for the last weeks. Not this one, like not 18. 17 was not bad. My guess, everyone comes back in the end as they meet in one reality w which is left. Remember the episode where the boys crossed over and met their real counterpart actors of themselves? It's sort of like ending of the Jesus Christ Superstar movie in the 70s. Coming from Unity, this was definitely one of the best episodes of the season. I was expecting a lot more, which was definitely one of the best episodes of the season. Oof. I was expecting a lot more from this episode. The dialogue, in my opinion, was not very good. Some of it was so cheesy and forced that even though the end scene with Misha was well acted, the dialogue wasn't great. Also, when Cass died, I felt nothing. I mean, we've seen this so many times before. Remember in season 12 when he died? He got a funeral in season 13 and came back again like not long after that. And also the fight scene with Death was kind of bad, like how you mentioned, it's just like every fight scene is now. It was pretty funny how Death kind of just waited for Cass's speech to finish, then breaks the door down. I really hoping for more from the next episode. Yeah, oh yeah, he did die. Oh man, they had the funeral. Oh God, that was so stupid. You can see how the final episodes or have been affected by CV. They're, they even said it wouldn't be the epic ending that they originally written because not many actors could be on the scene at once. It also affected the fighting scenes, distancing. No, actually, that's not true. This was shot before the... Um, th they shot this before the... Uh, uh, before COVID everything shut down. They had only one day left to shoot of this episode and then, then the final episode, but CV didn't affect this. It's just how badly the show's written. They were starting to get a little bit more precautious, but I can guarantee you this wasn't affected by it as much as other shows were. And in fact, if you want an example, Van Helsing was a show that worked through it, worked up until it, um, and through a bit of COVID. And they were able to still do their stuff. Love watching your reviews, man. Uh, it's a nice to see critique without denial. The whole season feels like a parody of its former self. Remember when Dean, or Death was introduced and the guy dropped dead after being rude to him without any form of effort from Death? Or when Dean went to kill him in the pizza shop and the blade got so hot he dropped it? Yeah, the writers don't. Now Dean and Castiel can just run away from Billy, hold the scythe without any issues, and somehow come out alive. Problem with having literal God as the main antagonist. No weight behind anything anymore. Boom! This guy got it. This guy got it too. It's such a great introduction of a character, such a great moment in Supernatural history, and they're literally fighting with his counterpart like he's a two-bit villain. Blech.
so I've been wondering, the last few episodes were a mess. Hell, you could say that the last few seasons, but the post-COVID stuff especially. But what would it be like to binge this season? Will the corona break be noticeable? Will it feel like a long for a long fever dream? And will we, on that note, that uh, and will it... And will we end on that note that Sam is actually still in hell and hallucinating the last 10 seasons? I, at this point, I hope for that. But you know that what they say, hope grows out of despair. Hey, look at that. I made a pun. Oh, God, I really hope not. I hope not a dream or some hallucination crap. But yeah, actually, admittedly, the binge thing, I kind of am curious as what this would have been like had it just been one thing. Honestly, I, I still would have not liked the last three episodes considering they were... Or the, the last the first three episodes to come back from the break because of how pointless they were but maybe there might have been a little bit different of an effect yeah i feel like the writers don't know how why people uh why people our friendship don't know why people ship cast and dean and instead made up a reason for why Cassio loves dean and all in all it felt disingenuous to the people who invested their time in the show and i hope that they can find something with a better representation Maybe I'm deaf and blind, but I never got the Cass and Dean thing. Like, can they just be good friends without being lovers? I mean, some seems kind of like fans confusing being horny with what is actually happening between these two. Well, they got what they wanted, I guess. Nice hat. You like Assassin's Creed? Yeah, actually, I do. Um, this is actually probably one of my favorite hats in a long while. But yeah, I, I'm not. I haven't liked the last two. I didn't like Odyssey. I'd liked or Origins. I'm kind of on the fence about Valhalla though. Why do supernatural creatures on this show have the worst reflexes of all time? You would think death would be faster than a regular human like Dean, but decent episode though. No, like, exactly, right? Like, the person who commented up before about uh, how death is just so easily beatable in this fucking episode. Didn't get, I didn't get teary-eyed during Cass's death speech. I was just like, okay, Dean loves everyone. We already knew that, but I love you. I could practically hear the other fangirl screaming, Destiel is canon. Can someone please dig me a six-foot hole so I can bury myself in? Fangirls are so damn desperate. I highly doubt that that cat what's what Cass meant. Dean said earlier, best friend. Dean fundamentally changed Cass from Stone Cold Angel to someone who thinks and feels rationally. I never took that I love you as a romantic inclination. I take it as more of a thank you. My only explanation for the Thanos snapping is the rapture. Let's see how they paint Chuck in this la in these last few episodes. Am I the only one who feels like they're pulling a Lost series finale? I hope not. I know it's bad, but I hope they aren't. I have mixed feelings about Castiel's death. I wish there will be an episode where... Like where Bobby died. That episode made me cry like a baby, but that was just one sad bit. Yeah, actually, no, that's a really good example of an episode about someone dying and they kept it and it was sad. That's the last time that's actually been like, like that. No, that's a good that's a good example. Cass's death felt hollow. I was f trying to feel for that scene, but it was just like meh. I guess all the Destiel shippers are happy now, can die happy now. I'm not surprised though. The, the writer is a huge Destiel shipper. And so it's made sense for him to dedicate nearly 90% of the last episode to make it as canon as possible. Sigh. There was possibly nothing to take away from this episode. It's a very bland one and a mediocre final death for a big character. Not nearly as bad as Crowley's exit, but still just as terrible. Also, I don't know if there's poor continuity, but props for them for, them for advertising fast gas. I didn't know they had actual gas stations like those in BC. Who knew that they would have bought a prefer... Uh, prefer uh, gotta get that Canadian content. Yeah, no, that's a no. There's gas stations like that. At first, I thought it was one in Abbotsford, but no, there's. I think it might have been one in Ladner, which I'm kind of surprised. If they got back to Ladner, that would be funny because I don't know how they would be allowed back there because they burnt it at the beginning of this season. Why I liked everyone disappearing in this episode, I immediately thought of why is Thanos here snapping supernatural characters away? And if episode 19 is a ripoff of Endgame, at least be decent if you're going to rip off another film. The whole cast thing was fine. It got a lot of fangirls excited. Geez, I wonder why. Also, where is your boy Adam slash Michael? Is Michael just allowing Adam to eat burgers and fries or what? Or is Andrew Dabb just going to bring him back for the fees for the final season finale? I'm hoping, man, because they, they, they built him up really cool. Show's been off course for a while. Yes, massive flaws. Yes, but I take everything for what it is. Over-criticizing and comparing to Marvel is asinine. Just enjoy it after 15 years. This is my childhood coming to an end. Give your reviews the title of the episode to spare. No, I'm not doing that because I tried that before and... I don't know, it's just so much naming and it just gets lost. But yeah, I'm watching it. I've been watching it since the beginning, man. I, I'm waiting to see how this ends, but it's not the same show, not at all. Once upon a time, I thought Supernatural was awesome, but that was long ago. Sarah Z is gonna have a field day with the show. <laughs> I actually would like to see her do another video about it because I really liked her video talking about the show. 
They really wanted to write another filler episode, but their hand was forced, so they propped up the filler with some myth arc. The Castiel stuff was cringy, heavy-handed, and has come out of nowhere because he had no meaningful storyline for four <laughs> plus years. So I've forgotten the character exists as anything more than a prop. Too bad Castiel's story had been given more weight over the years because suddenly giving him a storyline and personality to make his death meaningful is out of left field. And Dean not answering the phone from his brother, who most likely is with God at the end, Ugh, the writing is so fucking terrible and heavy-handed at times. Yeah, no, like, why... You should have built up this. This is such a huge critical moment, and you just slam it in at the end. I said, Supernatural seems... Both the show, uh, writers, and the fans, most, big fan base, seem to have the attention span of, like, an ADHD child. And I had ADHD. And this is even worse. Didn't cry for Castiel's death at all. Everyone on Twitter saying Castiel is canon, yet I found the conversation about uh, was about Castiel focusing on being happy by explaining to Dean how much he's changed him. Platonic, in my opinion. All in all, last week's episode was definitely better, as you stated, and hopefully next week's is action-packed. I'd hope so. Good God. I wouldn't say they pulled an Infinity War because Infinity War wiped out everyone in existence. Chuck wiped out the multiverse, leaving Sam, Dean, Jack, and Michael around. I love that death was literally and figuratively knocking on Castiel's and Dean's door. That was, yes, that is a good moment. It reminds me of what was David Tennant with Doctor Who, and when he hears three knocks, he knows that's the end. I loved Eleni... Uh, I loved Aline's off-screen death because that made it more heartbreaking. I love Castiel's goodbye to Dean by giving his life and leaving the same handprint on Dean when he saved him from hell. Let alone, let alone, it's nice to see Castiel die happy. Dean left there to process everything Castiel told him. Being selfless and doing everything motivated by love is what he needed to hear. Seeing him there on the ground in tears was really well captured. Time to see how Jack and Michael and Sam and Dean stop Chuck once and for all, but we'll check. Chuck reap go uh, will Dean reap Chuck will the original death return somehow they've killed him right yeah I don't know it's okay but it's not as good as it could have been like I said it was really well really forced in the stuff that Castiel's saying to Dean is just so ridiculous and it, you could have built this up over a long time I was waiting for Cass to say something about Dean being his best friend brother to him, but that really didn't happen. I felt like they were Destiel baiting. Baiting, that's the word that I've been like circling around, but I couldn't find it. Then they like, love you came and I am convinced that's what they did. Also, I find myself smiling when Donna is in an episode. Love her and Brianna as well. Well, yeah, it was nice to see Donna. And then she just disappeared. Yeah, the dialogue with Castiel was cringy. I wish they would have dedicated an entire episode for him instead of two minutes. Bingo. 100% oh holy crap there's still so many goddamn comments thank you again but wow oh, my camera's probably hating me right now this episode was a lifeless mess and i'm going to say it this is my favorite of the season for one reason and only one reason billy getting her gets her leaving shit being gets the living shit being out of her i despise this annoying as hell character and it's honestly so satisfying for her to finally get what she deserved other than that this episode is blunt and yet again focused oh, shut up Yet again, focus on Jack, a character I gave, never gave a crap about, and a terrible ending for Castiel that saw him die in the most emotionless way possible. If this death wasn't an indication of the blandness of Dab that has in store for us, I don't know what is. To be fair, Infinity War copied Supernatural. God dusted himself and No, that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. The comments saying that this is not canon, Castiel's love, in love with Dean, explain Castiel calling Dean the one thing he can't have. It's clearly romantic, no matter how bad you think the scene is. Like I said, guys, it's as close. It's not confirmed. It's a baiting. It's a baiting. If you pay close attention to season four, you'll see how the relationship between Dean and Dan was a great full of sexual tension. What the hell are you talking about, dude? It reminds me of the way that people act when they have a same-sex crush on a friend and they want to or they hide it. But I understand that this is kind of easier thing if you're LGBT. My heart almost ripped out of my chest when Castiel's monologue. Although I thought it was at least a hug, I think this episode was entertaining enough, but again, only because they finally addressing the main plot, I am under the impression that the writers really like avoiding dealing with stakes or any permanent change of, of status, because no matter what they face, the four protagonists always end up fine. I would be surprised if Castiel's real ending it wasn't his real ending. And if it was, I really think the only courage had to do it because the show is already ending. Besides Infinity War, that disappearing thing also made me think of the best TV series of all time, Leftovers. I've heard The Leftovers is very good and I do mean to get around to it. I, I don't know. For me, I never got that impression. I'll re I'm going to be re-watching season four so I can confirm this or deny this or... No, sorry, not that. Sorry. I can confirm it or whether I'm right or you're right. But I never got that impression. I never got that feeling between the two of them. They're just like awkward friends. And 
you got that through a lot of the latter seasons. I wonder who is supposed to be the Tony Stark in this episode, and he's Castiel's Spider-Man. Oh, I do agree that this episode is a complete ripoff of Infinity War. I would like this. I would. I would have liked seeing them go out on the Rapture. Uh, see, the Rapture happens more like the end in describing the Bible and Revelations in the Bible, but. They go all Infinity War in the next episode is Endgame with a time travel to save everyone to fight against God. Weird saying that they're going to kill God. And fuck Cass, that was over the top cringe. I would have understood the Cass scene if he was in front of Sam and Jack and Dean with his last words. I hate that the fandom all going Destiel is, is fucking friends stop shipping characters. Everyone just see as gay is everything just great best friend. Oh my God, I can't read that English. It's really bad. Please, when you guys give me your comments... Please spell check. Oh, it's hard to read it when it's so bad. Cast's speech was all cap. Dean is a self selfish lunatic. Bingo. Nah, this episode wasn't that bad. The lighting should be darker, but the episode was good. Oh, by the way, the camera has run out. Uh, it's it's at the end, and it's just, woof, it's too much. So I'm just going to do these latter ones in the dark. Uh, everyone keeps focusing on that I love you, blah, 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 but it isn't what I can't have the line. This was clearly meant to imply something, and anyone who thinks the writers didn't put that in there on purpose is ex being extremely naive. I do, oh my god, do think that Castiel is canon. I do not think Castiel is canon. Of course it isn't, but the writers doing crap like that, what they did in that scene is what why we have the problems that we are having then you get fangirls going mental and you get really aggressive adults being mean to 14 year olds about a tv show so i'm glad the show is ending thank you 2020 you finally did something positive don't be a hater i ain't hating i'm just criticizing just criticizing baby I liked most of the episode but Cass's death impl and implied castiel was cringy as fuck and so forced that the fans think that they could have done better with that scene billy chasing them around instead of snapping them out of existence was bullshit Okay, that's it. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, I'm not putting the camera back on for this, but thank you guys for your comments. Holy, that's, this is going to be possibly a 30 minute long video. Jesus. Whew. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Thank you guys for all your comments. Two more episodes left. And I would, I, I would just ask if you guys are going to make a comment, please do a little bit of spell check. Please. It's, it gives me a bit of a headache trying to put your English, your, your bad bad grammar together sometimes just just spend an extra few minutes i'll still read them just you know i, I you have a few days to write these things down you don't have to jot it down just please my my brain will thank you anyways that's all for me guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe two more episodes left see you guys next time